In this video, we're going to be using Ariana and Evans the Undersea and the Fatit Lestorto Slant Razor. Stay tuned. Hey there folks and welcome back to another video. I'm your host CDB and thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it and we have a good one for you today because we're going to be using one of the best scents or actually I call it the best scent of 2020. This is Ariana and Evans the Undersea. It is a beautiful, what I would call a citrus aquatic. We'll put the notes for you on the screen there. Really, really beautiful composition. Um, strongly scented as well, which I like a lot. It just comes together so nicely. You get the citrus, you get the aquatic notes. And for me, this is my favorite aquatic scent of all time. And it was my favorite scent of all of last year. Absolutely superb. If you are in the shaving shop club, it comes to you for under $5 an ounce, which on our cost chart there is a fair price. And honestly, the quality of this soap is just, um, I, I don't think I can praise it enough because it, it's outstanding. And the scent Phenomenal. We had a lot of fun with this label, which is about to change. He's about to put a new label on this. Um, I think we had fun with it. At first, I didn't like it, and then it grew on me. It really stands out. My chief complaint about the label was it didn't have the information on it. Like, it was missing a lot of stuff. But honestly, I grew to love it. And there's not very many of these probably left around, and it's about to change. So if you want the undersea in this label, now is the time to get it. Let's put the ingredients for you there on the screen. This is how you can buy it now. Uh, when it comes out in Kaizen 2. This was in the original Kaizen formula, which is just terrific. As far as skin food soaps go, the best value in shaving, um, I think, Ariana and Evan soaps or the Shaving Shop Club. Um, there are skin foodie soaps that come to you at a very reasonable price. All right, the razor for today is the Fatip Lestorto Slant Razor. As you can see there, that slant is pretty severely Torque. Now, one of the things I want to mention about these razors, and these are not expensive. I got this at Magger for like $32. You have to be careful when loading the Fatip razors because they have a tendency not to line up properly. So what I tend to do is I, I will unscrew that. I will eyeball it. While I'm eyeballing it, I will hold it to make sure it's... The, I will hold the blade tab because there is a little bit of the blade tab there. I will hold it line it up, and then twist it. If you just twist it without paying attention to it, you can have uneven blade exposure on the Fatip razors. Uh, again, these are made in Italy. Fit and finish is not perfect, but good enough for the price. But do make sure if you have a Fatip razor that you have even blade exposure on both sides. And with the slant, it's a little more difficult to see because it's slanted. And the concept of a slant razor is to cut like a guillotine. And uh, some people think that really provides a boost, some not, but Either way, make sure your Fatip razor lines up properly because they have a tendency to not uh, provide e uh, even blade exposure. So make sure you check that out. We have lined it up properly today. Let's get into it. Let's get into it because I got things to do. I got about uh, 22 hours growth. It's very early. I shoot these videos one day ahead, so it's actually Tuesday morning. And uh, today I'm going to go down. Uh, I talked a little bit about this in the... Uh, head shaving video the other day. I'll pop it up in one of the corners here if I get time. Um, we've had some health issues with the family. My, my mother-in-law specifically has had some setbacks. Um, she was admitted to the hospital last week and then they let her out. And then the whole weekend, she was completely out of it. And yesterday they readmitted her. Um, and my wife has to, my wife needs to come home because she's missed several days of work, she, she has some things she needs to do. So I'm gonna go, go down today and, you know, provide some relief for my father-in-law. You know, if he needs someone at the hospital or he needs someone at the house to take care of the dog or get food or whatever, I'm just gonna go down and, you know, render whatever aid I can um, because it's it's a pretty difficult time for all involved. And uh, so I, I took the day off work so I can go down and just sort of help out and be there you know, as needed. And so I'm shaving a little bit early today and those uh, continued prayers and good vibes would be appreciated because it's been a pretty rough road, you know, for the family, um, just being honest. And so anyway, let's get this shave in the book so I can do what needs to be done today and try to help as I can. Always try to be a blessing if you can. I don't always hit the mark on that, but I try and I hope you will too. Um, we got a little bit better news from my brother who I told you in that head shaving video 
was he had been admitted to a hospital for about a week due to complications from the Rona. And by the way, this is feeling nice. He did get out. However, he still has this uh, box that's hooked into his lungs. I, I don't really know what all it does, but he's out, but he has this kind of box hooked to his lungs still with these tubes and, and whatnot. So he's doing better. He's not there yet, but some improvement there. So we're happy about that. But my mother-in-law just is not doing well at this moment. So I'm just hoping and praying for a better result. And hopefully they'll, they'll get her taken care of in the hospital. All right, let's get back on the shave. Let's get back on track here. Um, this razor feels mild to me in terms of blade feel, but it's cutting very effectively. Very nice. Very nice. Feels nice and smooth. Just again, make sure I can't reiterate this enough with the Fatip razors. Make sure that blade alignment is good because they do have a tendency to, if you just screw it down and I've, uh, I just cut that bump off my neck once again. And I, I guess I'm just going to continue to do that. <laughs> but anyway, there's the bump. Um, just be careful lining these up. The soap smells incredible. Again, this is my favorite scent. I put it at the top of my list for 2021, or excuse me, 2020 soaps that came out in 2020. It's a beautiful citrus aquatic is what I call it. And uh, it's one of Pete's, in my opinion, best original compositions in terms of scent. Really love it. And even my mother, when I was caring for her back around uh, Thanksgiving and the first of the year, when I used this and I put on the aftershave, she was like, boy, I really like that. So my mom even uh, loved this scent. So that certainly made me feel good as well. I was fixing breakfast for them one morning and she came in and uh, she was like, man, what is that? That is fantastic. So Pete, you should make an EDP in this undersea. It is terrific. And in fact, you should make uh, EDPs in more of your sense. And by the way, Pete will be on Real Talk this Friday, this Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern. So if you have any questions or comments for Ariana and Evans, Pete, then, uh, Please make the comment below and we will try to remember to get to that. I normally try to keep those shows relatively short, but there's no way I'm going to be able to do it with, uh, with Pete. So the first pass with the Lestorto was really, really nice. Feather Blade is the blade that's in there. I've been really enjoying Feather Blades recently, so I've been using them a lot. And we'll get to our second pass. So let's talk a little bit more about the soap formula here, which now it's going to be Kaizen 2E with Super Blue Emu. Um, personally, I do not always need nor want skin food in a soap. Um, it's not required for me because I handle my post-shave needs in the post-shave, as mentioned many, many times. However, if you're looking for a soap that will give you a very good post-shave, assuming you don't use post-shave products, or maybe if you think the properties of soaps will survive through your post-shave, then... Uh, Ariane and Evans is hard to beat because it's well priced, especially if you're a member of the club. You know, they're not charging six, seven dollars an ounce or even five dollars an ounce if you're a member of the club. So you're getting a really good, high quality skin foodie soap, which again, I don't personally need, but I don't mind it. It's not going to hurt anything. But if you're in the market, you're one of those folks who think, you know, soaps dry you out and you really need all the butters and oils and the dragon tallow and the chupacabra oil and the super blue emu and the unicorn milk. Um, this is definitely a soap to, to try if you haven't tried it because you can get all those sort of exotic ingredients for a very reasonable price. And many people think that, uh, you know, this is the best formulation on the market. I wouldn't argue with you if you said that. I certainly would not, because I think it's very, very good indeed. Now let's pick up the pace here a little bit, so we don't want to make a super long video. We do have things we have to do today, as mentioned before. But uh, this is a legitimately good soap. It does get a lot of hype, but sometimes things get things get hype just because they're good. 
and this is the case. Um, actually, I had a, a gent yesterday. I won't mention his name because I didn't ask for his permission, but he emailed me, and I'm sorry I haven't returned your email yet, but I will. And he said, man, um, the Aryan Anna and Evans Kaiser is the best soap I've ever used, bar none. And he's used other top soaps on the market, some of which are marketed specifically for being skin friendly. And he mentioned that it's better than everything he's tried. Um, and so, you know, and it was his first time trying it. So there, there is, uh, there is some legitimate legitimacy, excuse me there, to the claims that Ariane and Evans Kaizen, you know, holds the throne in terms of perhaps best formula. Now keep in mind for me, for me, skin food is not mandatory or essential. So I don't really factor that in. But a lot of people who use this really believe that they get a superior post-shave and so on and so forth. I can't validate that. Um, cause I, I don't, I use several astringents in my post-shave. And so I can't really validate it, but it's what I'm told. And for me, uh, when I'm looking for a base, I want something that smells great, or excuse me, not the base itself, but when I'm looking for a soap, let's say, I'm looking for something that smells great, is reasonably priced and makes a great lather easily, a great creamy lather easily. And uh, that's what I need. Some other folks, um, a lot of other folks want skin food and conditioners in that soap. It's part of their, you know, it's a mandatory requirement. So this one would meet your requirement if you're in that category. Um, really makes it easy lather. It doesn't require you to use twice as much product which I'm a big fan of. I do, do not like that tendency at all. And I've been uh, noticing that over the last six months to a year that as soap makers continue to push the envelope on the skincare aspect of the shave, the shave itself and the fun of the shave begins to suffer for me. This is my opinion. Because now I've got to use twice as much product to make the lather. It's finicky about how it holds water. Kaizen is not that. Kaizen is not finicky at all, all when it comes to water. You can just keep adding it and adding it and adding it. And I did today when I was making this lather. But when you suck all the fun out of the shave and make a soap that's no longer fun to lather, then for me, I don't care how much skin food is in it. it it's You've now killed my fun. And I don't want you to kill my fun, soap makers. And so I'm going to buy soaps that I enjoy to use. That's very important to me because I, um, you know, I shave every day. I shave on average 11 times a week, you know, including head shaves, sometimes more. Um, seven face shaves and at least four head shaves a week. And so I want to enjoy every single shave and I want to enjoy making every single lather and I don't want to be fooling around with these skin foodie soaps that get washed out or require me to use two or three times as much product. I'm just not going to mess around with it. And that is not to say you shouldn't. You use what you like and what works best for your use case and, and that's what I do. I'm addressing my use case and fun of lather is uh it's a mandatory for me. If it's finicky, I just won't, you know, I just don't enjoy it. And like I said before, I'm going to focus. There's so many products out there now with new ones popping up every day. You don't need to use something you don't enjoy. There's no need to do that. Why bother? And so uh, recently I've made the decision, you know, moving forward with certain brands, unless they change those formulations a little bit. Um, they're just not enjoyment, enjoyable for me to use and I'm not gonna use them, you know. It's almost to the point where I need to take a base, like get an Ariana and Evans unscented and put it in the bowl and put the other uh, super skin foody soap on top of it with their scent. <laughs> so the Ariana and Evans base can rescue it and make it less finicky. But I'm not going to go to that trouble because I can just use this. Why would I bother? So that's my perspective. The razor here, I would call it mild. You get a little bit of blade feel, but it's a good shaver. 
feels good in the hand. Again, fit and finish is not perfect, but these razors aren't, aren't very expensive. Again, like 30 bucks. Um, this is a nice slant razor though. I do like it. I like the way it's shaving. Just a little bit of blade feel, nothing menacing. Just feels good overall, I think. Just feels like a nice, easy, close shave, which is really what we want. And that was enjoyable. Let me trim that a little bit. All right, man, I tell you what, the undersea just smells so doggone good. This was a really, really nice shave. Let me rinse and then we'll come back, get into the post. Stay tuned. And all right, we are back in off cam. We did a warm water rinse to remove the soap and then we applied our alum, no stinging. So that was a super smooth shave. We followed the alum with a cold water rinse and then we towed off with our Lancaster towel prior to using the Thayer's Cucumber Watermelon Magic because it's made by witches. Excellent shave today with the Fatip Lestorto razor. Mild slant, but I really enjoyed it. No problems at all. This runs about 30 some bucks-ish. I got this one at Maggard. The soap for today was phenomenal. My favorite scent of 2020, The Undersea by Ariane and Evans. Keep in mind, the label and formula on this is changing, so get it now if you want this old label. I've grown to actually love it. I think it's um, fantastic. I don't know, I just it's, it becomes such a great thing with us moping around about the label, and now I'm just like, I'm sentimental about it. Great soap, though. I really love the scent. Terrific, top-rate stuff. Of course, we used our Captain's Choice bowl, our Ariana and Evan synthetic brush, and we're going to close it out today with the Undersea Splash. And Peter's splashes are top right as well. I used, uh, what was it yesterday? SoCal Hipster, and I could smell that for a number of hours. And so that's fantastic. Oh, man. Oh, what a great scent. Wow. Ooh, this is good stuff. Anyway, thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate you. Wishing you many blessings. Until next time, I've been your host, CDB, reminding you, it's your shave, do it your way, and as always, God bless.